Now, now, what advice would you, if you could go back in time, what advice would you give to a younger version of yourself? I think uh, to come to Nashville sooner than we did. Mm-hmm. I think that we, we moved to California, speaking of that state, for a while. And I think we should have come straight on to Nashville. I think we should have... Um, we should have understood the whole songwriting thing more mm-hmm. earlier. That That is something that we didn't really have a grip on that. And I mean, how do you know? You know, we right. were in Ohio. <laughs> we, we, you know, we're just up there kicking around song ideas. Yeah. You know, we don't know what we're doing. Then we came, this is funny. And we came down here and we go and we have a meeting at Sony Tree. And we met with somebody that w- was a friend of a friend. And the guy took a meeting with us. And he was in the Christian division and we weren't writing Christian songs, but he met with us and he turned around in his chair and he said, do you listen to the radio? And I thought, what is this guy talking about? Of course I listen. What do you mean? Do we listen to the radio? Because the music we were writing didn't sound very commercial at that time. Ah. And, you know, you, you don't understand until you start listening to it when somebody's pointing out, well, you know, this is, this is what you need to have in a commercial song. You need to have this strong hook or, you know, all, all those elements that make a really good commercial song. <laughs> so that was something that's, that's a, that's a, that's a point. You, I, I remember one of the first screenplays that I wrote and I pitched to someone and they looked at me and they're like, this is expensive. Go back and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah. this is an expensive story. And I was just like, and, and I'm working on a, on a story with my friend right now. And I was like, I want this one shot to be shot through Zoom. Why? Because it would drive the price down and it would be really cheap to do it that way. And, and she was like, well, well, how about we do this and have this chase scene? And I was like, I'm thinking that's that, too that, expensive. It's ex- <laughs> too expensive. You know, we're talking micro budget film here, you know. That, and so I think that those people who the artist has to find out how to balance with the business person. And I love that. It was one of your first points. That you have to treat this like a business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's probably, you know, and as a kid, I was really into musical theater. There was a big part of me that always thought I'd end up living in New York City, being on Broadway, you know, that kind of, that kind of a dream. And um, I remember my mom said, you know, you should go to Nashville. And I was like, ah, Nashville, who? You know, that kind of idea. And I think if we had come here sooner, it, you know, you, I would have been 10 years ahead of the game yeah. by the time I got here and really started getting into it. And it, cause it takes time yeah, it to takes immerse time. into an environment, meet people, network, that kind of thing. And, and in Nashville, the hang is the name of the game, hanging yeah. out, going to events. going. I mean, there's, Nobody can ever say there's no way to meet anybody here because there are thousands of ways to meet people in this town and it's happening every night of the week, you know? Yep. So, it's all about networking. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, networking, if you're a shy person, networking can kind of be an excruciating experience, I guess. You know, you and I don't seem to be like the kind of people that are uh, having trouble talking to others because I... <laughs> don't and never have but i always say to people if if you're shy you know go go to something that's small go to some yeah. meetup that's something of your interest and have three questions and go around and talk to three people and yeah. ask them those same three questions you're going to start a conversation with somebody because not everybody's going to be shy in that room no you know and they it, they're at a meetup because they yep. want to try to get something going on <laughs> right and I think it's about willing to take that chance, you know, to just go out and see, because I think that openness, yeah. openness to whatever, to life, kind yeah. of life kind of open doors for you is what it's all about. Yeah. yeah, it's really true. Now, now if you had uh, uh, Aladdin's land, what would you wish for? World peace would be the first thing. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm being funny, but. But uh, the first thing, yeah. that I, the, the one thing that I would really wish for is that more people understood their gifts. Oh, I love that. And more people were not afraid to go after some of their gifts. And I'll segue that into this course that I just published called Spark Your Creativity. 
it's something that I always wanted. I always wanted to write a course. And I, I just really believe that everybody's a creative being. And I, I want to try to help people understand how to tap into who they are in that, that way. I and I'm that. not saying that, you know, you have to uproot your life and move to a music center or anything like that. You can be who you want to be right in your hometown. It's just be the best person that you were born to be yeah. and, and figure out who you are creatively. Because I, didn't, I think that's what's wrong with the world. I think so many people don't. They're so unhappy because they they want things that other people have, but they yeah. don't look at their own gifts. Yes. Now, that's a really broad statement, but what was it that's, that Marianne where Marianne Williamson had that quote? Your greatest fear is not that you are inadequate, but that you are uh, powerful beyond measure or something like that. It was this famous quote. Well, I think a lot of people are afraid of being successful because they're yes. they're afraid it they're gonna fail or something. I, yeah. I, yeah, I don't understand that. But but when I was doing my song at a girl camps in, um, in Nashville, one of my big things was about lose the fear. And, and I love that. It's something I learned in acting, you know, write down your fears and then we're going to burn them in a fire, you know, and we'd have a video of a fire and everybody would have to throw those away. And, and, and it's it's easy when you're with a group of people and everybody's strong and like, yes, we're yeah, going to yeah, beat the fear. Yeah. And then you go off by yourself and it's you again, all alone with all <laughs> that stuff. Yeah. And you have to, and you just have to really figure out how you are going to get around that. Because for some people, fear is so completely, uh, it, it just freezes them. It, my my, it my wife, them in their she, she doesn't always like to talk about it. She deals with massive anxiety. Massive. Oh, really? And every time she goes on stage, I mean, she's, she won the original winner of Vietnam Idol. She won the ultimate entertainer in 2013. She's been on stages. That's fantastic. Awesome. Like, yeah, she's amazing. Can sing all these genres. You know, she was in the Lion King. She was the, the voice of Beyonce for Vietnam. She was Nala for Vietnam. Oh, wow. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. It's a, but every single time she goes on stage, she's terrified. And then once she well, starts know, I'm singing, gonna tell, I'm going to tell her to read this book. It's called the mindless musician. I love that. And I can't even think of the author right now. I'll send you the information on it. I'll look but, it it's, up. but, but the woman who wrote the book's husband was a concert pianist and he would get anxiety. He'd get nerves and stuff before he would go on stage. And it's a really interesting book. She it might help her. Uh, and it's all about, things that you can do, you know, to, to not be so afraid or have anxiety. But the other thing too, I think is the perception of ourselves. You know, yeah. we, we, we perceive something before we step on stage and, and it's natural to have adrenaline and everything. You're excited to be out there. Um, I do a show, a Carol King, James Taylor show. And we play with symphonies and everybody has their ritual. You know, I don't like people to talk to me right before I'm going to go on stage. And a lot of times they do, yeah. you know, yeah, they, think right? that you, they want to speak to you while you're, cause they, cause they should, cause you're standing there or something, you know, and it, sometimes it'll take me a song. It's like, I leave my body. It's the weird, ask your wife mm. if this happens or it's like you leave your body in that first song and then you come back down, you know, it, and it, I just think that's just, being in the moment of being on stage, it's, it's, it's adrenaline. It's all those things because you know that you can do it. You you've done it a million times. You know, you're not going to fail. You've practiced, you're prepared. Um, you know, all that stuff. Why, why do you get nervous? Why do you get anxiety? I don't know. It's, it's something you have to search within yourself, but that book, you know, is really interesting. And she might, she might enjoy that book. Might help I her. definitely, I'll find her a copy. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, yeah. Well, that's exciting. Now, now, any last bits of advice that you'd like to share with people tonight? I I just want your your listeners to know uh, that that their their gifts are so important, their talent is important. To keep their eye on their own goal and not look at other people and and try to be somebody else. Their gifts are so important and to keep their eye on their own goal to not look at other people yes. and what other people are doing. It, it takes enough just to just to stay focused on yourself and to never and to never give up on yeah. their dream yeah. to uh, 
to find a good mentor and and listen to uh, other people's kind criticisms and and not to get caught up in being afraid of putting their stuff out there and just to be just to be a good person and to try to create create things that that move people that uh, give people happiness. I love that. Uh...